My medical problem started in 2001 when my thyroid completely shut down. I was diagnosed with Sjogren's syndrome, which is an autoimmune disorder. I got really sick. Your body doesn't know what's good and what's bad, so it attacks the good stuff as well as the bad stuff. Every six months they had to test all of my major organs, my heart, my liver, my kidneys to make sure that it wasn't attacking anything else. I had been prayed over, I had prayed over myself, and, and when I spoke nothing happened. After a while, being a believer that's not getting healed, it gets frustrating. You just kind of stop believing for yourself and just, and just accept it. This disease was slowly killing me from the inside out. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Teresa Hotelli. Praise the Lord. Man, this is Teresa and what a great testimony. So again, we want to go on beyond just the healing, but you need to let people know exactly what Jesus healed you from and how he did it. Because this is a different testimony than Nikki's in the sense that it was just nothing but the word of God. Yep. Yep. I, uh, over the course of 10 years, I was diagnosed with lupus Sjogren syndrome, uh, my thyroid completely quit. I had degenerative disc disease in my back. I had bulge discs in my back that would put me out for weeks at a time. I had carpal tunnel. So all of these things that the doctor said were incurable. How do you get all of those things? Bad living. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have had yeah. people come up to me and tell me all the stuff that they've got. And I say, how did you get yeah. all of this? Like. I let it in. I let it in through ignorance. You know, I was, I was raised under, um, my dad was a Rama graduate. Oh, really? And so I was raised under the word of God, but I never took it for myself. The word was always about rules and regulations, and it wasn't about relationship. And it took me 15 years of rebellion and, and bad living and, and all of those things that you think are freedom in the beginning that eventually bring you into bondage to sickness. And so your dad was a Rama grad Yep. and you went the other direction. Af after I left, um, for college, I left my faith behind. I didn't know that because I bet your parents were thrilled to see you come back around. They were. And, you know, I, I really credit them and I want to encourage any of you parents out there that have prodigal children to keep praying for them because I truly believe it was their prayers that, that kept me alive during those 15 years that I rebelled. And I, I truly believe that it was because of that, because I was treating my body so badly um, that I allowed all of that sickness and disease to come in, even though I had the information about the word. Now, were you a believer during this time? Absolutely. Belie believer so you were a be filled with the spirit. You were an unbelieving believer. Yes, I was. <laughs> Baptized with the spirit, had experienced the gifts, you know, uh, throughout my high school years. And, but it wasn't mine. It was just information that I had. You could have asked me for a scripture on healing. I could have given you 20 of them. You know, I spoke them over myself. I quoted them over myself. Um, but it was truly coming to Karis that changed everything for me. So you hadn't changed before you came to Karis or... How, how does a girl that's living 15 years in rebellion come to a Bible college? Well, in uh, 2007, I was at the end of my second marriage. And at that point, I had been diagnosed with the Sjogren syndrome and the hypothyroidism. So I was on various medications for that. And um, I was really at the end of myself in 2007. I was in a, a hole so dark, I didn't think I would ever get out. And um, one night I had just found out my husband was cheating on me. So the, my second marriage was ending and I was talking to my mom on the phone and I just said, mom, I feel so empty inside. And 
in that moment, I heard God say that even though you have run from me, I have never left you. That always gets awesome. me. That's awesome. And, and I saw in that moment that it didn't matter what I had done. It didn't matter how far I ran from him, how fast I ran from him, the things that I had done, that he was there waiting for me the whole time. And that even, even when I fell, he wanted to pick me up. Even when I was hurt and broken, he wanted to hold me and comfort me. And how can you not turn to, to God that, that loves you in the middle of your mess? And um, so that was in the end of 2007. And so I was, I became a radical for Jesus at that point. I mean, I was going to church. I was reading the Bible. I was rediscovering the importance of my prayer language and, and I was doing them all for the right reason. You know, before I prayed, I studied, I read, I was nice to people that I didn't like because that's what I was supposed to do. To soothe your conscience, not really to know the Lord. Yeah, exactly. I was, it was rules. You know, I had to do this in order to please God, in order to walk in his blessings. And, but now I just, I couldn't get enough. You know, I wanted to know this God, not just know, uh, not just know where a verse is, but I wanted to know him. If he loved me this much, I wanted to love him that much. And if not more in return. Man, that's amazing. You know, people say that they know that God loves them, but there's a difference in just knowing that God loves you and then experiencing that love. And you were experiencing it. It was real. You know, Romans 2, 4 says it's the goodness of God that brings men to repentance. And that, and I experienced that verse in that moment. It was his goodness. Nothing else. Nobody could have convinced me. Nobody could have argued me into it. It was purely his goodness. And because of that, I just, I'm full speed ahead since 2007. So... The progression then you would think, well, okay, well, then she started to get better because she started developing relationship. Um, And during that next four years, I met my current husband, Patrick, and been married 11 years now. He's a great man. He's been one of our security guys, and Patrick's just a great guy. I think they codenamed him Smiley, wasn't it? I think so. Because he hardly ever cracks a smile, so his code name is Smiley. When he's working, he's very serious. That's he just is. the way he is. It is. He's a great guy. But in 2011, then, Patrick and I had been married for two years, and we are diligently seeking the Lord, asking him what he wants us to do with our lives together. And um, in 2011, I was diagnosed with lupus. I was diagnosed with the two back issues, and I was diagnosed with the car. So even tunnel. though you were experiencing this love of God and your yep. whole life was turning around, your body didn't improve. No, it was getting worse. And at this point I'm speaking the word. I believe the word, you know, not only do I know the word, but I believe it and I'm speaking it and I'm talking to my body and nothing is working. So by the time I got to school in 2013, we, you know, we just moved out to Colorado. We didn't even know you (laughs) when we came out here in 2011. So how did you come to the school if you didn't know about it? We went to Lawson's church and the Bible college was right next to it. And we're like, Hey, I think somebody gave us one of his CDs or something once. And, and so, and then within two weeks, Patrick was signed up for school. And so we just knew that this was the the path we were supposed to take. And I started in 2013. And by that point I was, I was done with believing for myself. I, I was done believing for healing. I was frustrated. I was exhausted. I had done everything that I knew to do. Nothing was working. I was still getting worse. These diseases were still killing me, you know? And so getting to school then in that first month, Barry Bennett taught a class on revelation and revelation is really what changed everything. I learned that revelation isn't just for the super dupers, you know, it's not just for the teachers and the evangelists, but revelation is for everybody. And I'd hear people say, I got a revelation of this, or I got a revelation of that. And I'm like, I don't even know what that means. How do you do that? How do I get that? You know, so I, I set on a a course to learn about revelation and how to get revelation. And it was that understanding that came that took the word that I knew and brought it to life 
on the inside of me. It took, uh, in September of um, 2013, God spoke Romans 8.11 to me. And that became my verse. I knew as soon as I read that verse, that that verse would be a verse that led to my healing and a, a renewed sense of hope. Now, how did you know that? Revelation. Revelation. You know, it was, but that wasn't the end of it. I mean, you can know that God is speaking a verse to you, but if you don't know what to do with that verse, then it's still just going to be head knowledge to you. It's still just going to be a verse. And for so many years, I would come across a scripture that, you know, I knew that God's trying to speak to me with something, but I didn't know how to get that out of, out of the verse. So I started applying my four principles of revelation that I apply to everything since August of 2013. It has never failed to give me revelation. Those four principles of revelation was Barry's teaching. Did he have four principles? He, it was at the very end of his class and he gave three and I added one oh. to it. First one is removing distractions. So we can be so distracted by the busyness of life that it just drowns out God's voice. There's so much vying for our attention, you know, right now. So removing distractions, asking for wisdom, according to James 1, 5, it says we can ask for wisdom. I never thought to ask for wisdom, but I started asking for wisdom, you know, after that to pray in the spirit. And the key to that is having what you want revelation on in mind as you're praying in the spirit. Because if you don't occupy your mind with something while you're praying in the spirit, you're going to be thinking about your to-do list. What am I having for yep. dinner? Where am I going tomorrow? What's, you know, what shoes should I wear? Um, and what's the one you added to it? That was the removing distractions. Oh, that was, that was the so first So what was one. the other one? You, the last one is keeping the word in the forefront of your mind. Because there is power in the word to heal you. And that means putting the word above everything else. So I used to give way too much attention to my body. I'd wake up in the morning, I'd take inventory. I'd see how much swelling I had, how much inflammation there was, how bad my back was hurting. And this was going to determine my day. So I stopped doing that. I stopped looking at my body for confirmation that I was healed. And I started just focusing on the word. And, and that was where my focus was. And within a month, so Romans 8.11 came to me in September. In October, I spoke to my body and it listened to me for the first time ever. I had a, my ear was plugged. And I was reading the word one day and I just said, you know what? I'm going to speak to my ear and it's going to open. So I stuck my finger in there and I said, ear, open up. And I took my finger out and it was still plugged. So I just kept reading, but there was something different. I knew that it was done, even though it was still plugged. And as I'm reading, I remember here it start to bubble and pop and all of a sudden it was open and it was clear. And that was a huge victory Amen. because I spoke and my body responded. You know, let me just point out before you go on that this is why some people don't get their healing is because they're trying to get the whole thing all at one time. And you have to start and sometimes start with your ear. Yeah. You may have all these other problems, but you got to start and build your faith as you go little by little. Yeah. David didn't start with Goliath. He started with smaller That's right. things. Lion and a bear. That's still yeah. pretty big. Yeah. <laughs> So the, f the funny thing is, a week later, I got sicker than I have ever been sick in my entire life. And it was a respiratory stuff and it lasted for months. But the, the difference was, I was angry now at that point. I had had revelation and I had seen it work in my body. And now the enemy was trying to steal that from me. And I found that in, even in my continued walk, that when I get revelation of something and I see a small victory, the enemy doesn't want you to keep that. He doesn't want you sharing victory. So a lot of times after you get revelation, you're going to, you're going to see an attack come after that because he wants to take that from you. So a lot of times it seemed like I'd take one step forward and then I'd take two steps back. But if you just are, the, the enemy doesn't have any patience whatsoever. 
We have patience as a fruit of the spirit. We can outlast him every time. And we do that by staying focused on his word. So that's how I got here. That's awesome. And, and I remember I remember in your video that you were sitting in class and you were specifically saying you wanted it to be Jesus that healed yeah. you through the word, not through somebody laying hands on you. That's kind of where your faith was. Yeah. Well, because I, I had been prayed for hundreds of times. Um, I'd seen people be prayed for and get healed and then shortly after they weren't healed anymore. So what you were saying this morning in your, in your introduction about the best way for a believer to get healed, to receive the healing that they already have is through the word. Because then when those attacks come afterwards, yeah. then you have something to stand on. You aren't reliant upon that person that prayed for you and you received healing through them. You can stand in the face of any symptom, in the face of any circumstance. And that's what the word does for you, yeah. getting it through the word. So I am absolutely no 15 years of sickness weren't fun, but I'm so glad that, that I got it through the word and through the word only. So you started believing for your ear and it improved, but then you got sick. How long was it before you actually saw all of these symptoms, Lee? Um, from that or from everything? From everything. How, how, how long was your journey? So we started school at the end of August and it was March 13th of 2014. So it was about six months. Um, six months of applying those four principles of letting God lead me wherever he wanted. Uh, the first month I was focused on healing and I was focused on Romans eight eleven. Uh, you know, Romans eight eleven says that the, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, if he dwells in you, then he will quicken your mortal body. And that word dwells means to be fixed and operating in your soul, in your mind, your will, and your emotions. So you, we all as believers have that same Holy Spirit on the inside of us. But if he is not dwelling, if he is not operating in, if you're not meditating on the word, if you're not letting the Holy Spirit operate in your life, then this verse can't work mm -hmm. because it's an if then if he is operating in your mind, will, and emotions, then he can quicken. And I love that word quicken in the Greek. It, it means to supernaturally invigorate, bring to life, restore to life your physical body. So I got a, I got a hold of that scripture and that, uh, that, that changed me. So it took about six months, but I mean, was there little progress all along the way or was it just six months and then boom, the whole thing happened? You know, people ask me all the time when the symptoms stopped and I can honestly say I was so not focused on my body at that point. I was really focused on how can I share this revelation that God has given me so that other people can get healed even if I'm not receiving Man, it. That's awesome. You know, how can that's I great. give it to other people? So I wasn't, I have no idea when the symptoms stopped. It could have been that moment. It could have been a month Once you before. believe, belief yeah. is better than experience really. Yes. And, but if you believe it will produce an experience. So I'm not saying that experience isn't important, but you can get to where you believe something so strong. It doesn't really matter what's going on. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the doctors say. It doesn't matter what your body says. It doesn't matter if your hands are so swollen, you can't close them. It doesn't matter when you know when you know, you just, you know. So I don't know when my symptoms stopped. That's amazing. I just I'm, know March 13th. I'm thinking of Mike Cash. He's going to be giving his testimony this week. And he had that huge tumor on his yep. chest. And yet once he knew he was healed, he didn't care what, if it yep. kept growing or whatever. And it was just a matter of, I think, about six months until the same thing happened to him. Yeah. That's awesome. March, March 13th, 2014, right there. At healing school. You know the spot. I was standing right there. Daniel was leading worship. Um, Adam Stone and um, Tessa were leading worship. And there were two words given from the stage. And it's like all of the revelation I had gotten over the last six months about who I am in Christ, what I have in Christ, my authority, the power of my words, what actually 
transpired with Jesus on the cross and where that authority comes from, all of it just kind of culminated in that one moment. And as opposed to the speaking and the commanding and the quoting and the, all of this stuff, I just told that stuff to get out of my body and it went. That's awesome. And you've had quite a life since you were healed. What have you and Patrick been doing since you graduated? Well, so after we graduated in 2016, we went to the Middle East for two years and studied Arabic. We sold everything we owned, thinking we were going to be over there forever. And two years later, God calls us back to the States. Um, we're still doing ministry in the Middle East, but our vision has expanded. And you were immersed in that culture. I mean, you lived yeah. there and here's a blonde, white woman over there. You were kind of a target, weren't you? It was interesting. Yeah, I'll just say it like that. <laughs> I think God protected yeah. you, but I, I remember getting your newsletters and some of the people, mm -hmm. the other uh, Americans that were over there and stuff, there were some really bad things happening. It was a dangerous yeah. time. So. Yeah, it, it was. But you know, when, when you know that's where you're supposed to be, I mean, you use your common sense, but you also believe in that protection that is afforded to you. And it also helps to have your husband a uh, real security guy. Yes, it does. Thank you, baby. <laughs> he used to do security for some of the dignitaries yeah. that would go over to Iraq and mm -hmm. different places like that. And so he's mm -hmm. a high level security guy. During, during some of our conferences, they'll sit around in the afternoon and train each other on how to kill a person with a credit card. <laughs> I told him, man, you need to get a life. <laughs> Something. But it came in really handy over there. I guess so. I mean, so. not that we had to kill anybody with a credit card, but yeah, yeah. I mean, I felt very secure over there. My, my mom says, well, between Patrick and God, you should be just fine. <laughs> so how did your parents respond when you got healed and came to Karis and stuff? Or I bet they're thrilled to see where you Abs are. Absolutely. Because my oldest sister actually had lupus and she was diagnosed when she was 18 and, um, she went through kidney transplants and dialysis and, and all of that stuff. So that was, you know, when you hear that word lupus, because I had seen what it did to my sister's body, you know, there's, there's a lot of fear that tries to come up there. Even with that little word, you know, lupus, there's a lot of fear that can come, but you can overcome that fear with the, with the word. But yeah, my, my parents obviously just ecstatic that the word that they taught me, the word that was planted in me, it was finally bearing fruit. So, so have you got to share these truths that set you free with others and seen anybody else get ministered to through it? Yeah, absolutely. We ap um, actually started a ministry, fully known ministry. So right now it's an online teaching because of all of the stuff that's going on. But uh, I share a lot of the revelation that I got over the, over the time and the revelation that I've gotten since then, because you have to have new revelation. You can't live on, you can't live on old revelation. Um, so we've had an amazing opportunity to reach lots and lots of people and see their minds changed, which, which is really my heart is to see people, um, learn the truth of the word, uh, learn who they are in Christ, but also how to apply that because you can know the word, but if you don't know how to actually walk it out, what that looks like in your everyday life, then it's hard for people to, to grasp it for them to take hold of it. So, um, we've been doing fully known ministries since March of 2019 and, uh, it's, going really well. That's awesome. You know, I minister and see a lot of people heal, but the people that I get really excited about are the ones like Nikki and uh, Teresa and, and the people that are going to be giving their testimony because when they reach out and get it, it's going to last. And yet I pray with some people, I've seen some great healings and yet they walk off and I have no confidence that they're going to be able to keep it. Yeah. Matter of fact, we've made some healing journey videos on a couple of people who we've pulled their testimonies and stuff because they aren't walking with the Lord. They were miraculously healed and yet it didn't change their relationship with the Lord. So what you're sharing, Teresa, is really important that you have to have that personal relationship. And when you reach out and get it directly from Jesus through your faith, you're going to be able to keep that. And that's right. you're still growing and maturing today. Yeah, that's right. And I think, I think this is the way everybody should get it, it because it's just, it's solid. 
You know, and I've had opportunity to take that sickness back. You know, a lot of people think that after they get healed that the battle's over, but it's, but it's not. You have to fight to keep your position. You so have you've to, had some symptoms or something return? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. But they don't stay. Uh huh. They don't awesome. ever stay. <laughs> I tell people it's just like, you know, the devil, you kick him out and he'll knock at the door. And that's what that is. That if you have a, a, a pain or whatever the symptoms of your things were, and if they come back, that's just like him knocking on the door. And if you say, oh no, I've got it back. Or, oh, no, I wasn't healed. You just open the door. But if you say, no, I was healed, then you just keep the door shut and he has to move on. That's right. He wants to convince you. If he can get you off of, I was healed, then, then he's, got an, he's got an inroad. And I've never had Sjogren's or any of those things that you were talking about. So those things wouldn't be an issue with me. But because you dealt with it for so many years, you feel one of those little things. And immediately you mm -hmm. start thinking, oh, no. Yeah. And you have to take those thoughts captives. Yeah, you do. And, you know, in the beginning, I, I can remember two or three different specific times. And I'd go to God and I'd say, listen. I know that I'm healed and I know this is not the, the, the symptoms. This is not the disease coming back on me. So what is it? Show me what this is, how to stand against it. And a, a lot of times it was something scriptural. He'd show me something different in the word that I'd seen before. But there were other times where I had to change what I was eating. I had to start exercising. I had to take care of my body. We have to take care of these temples. A lot of the stuff that's out there today is because we, people simply aren't taking care of themselves. That's so true. That's, a, that's a big thing. But when you know... You, you have to, you have to stay with it. You have to stay after it. You have to stay firm. You know, um, Matthew seven twenty five says that the rains came, uh, the, the rains descended and the floods came and the wind blew and it beat against that house, but it fell not because it was founded on a rock. Amen. That word rock is the word Petra. And it actually means a man like a rock by firmness and strength of his soul. So this means that when you are firm and steadfast in your mind, when your mind is lined up with the word of God, when those storms come, when those floods come, when that wind blows, when those symptoms come, you are are sure and you are steady because you are founded on the word of God. Well, you know, I'm really excited about these testimonies because I know people are relating some of the things as you were describing what you went through. And there's people that relate to you. You've got your faith developed in this area. So I want you to just look at the camera, pray with the people okay. as we close out this section and, okay. and people that are receiving right now, just encourage awesome. them to receive their healing. Awesome. Okay. Father God, I just thank you so much for this time that I've had to share this morning. I thank you, Lord, that the words that I speak, that they go out, that they break down strongholds, that they break down barriers. Father, that something that I have said today triggers a memory, triggers a thought, triggers a scripture, Father, that, that the people watching, that the people in this auditorium right now that need healing, Father God, that they take that as a word from you, that they take it, that they hold on to it, Father, and that they don't let it go. That the words that we speak right now from this stage, Father, they are spirit and they are life and they go out and they accomplish what they were set forth to do. I thank you, Father, for wisdom and knowledge, wisdom and understanding in the knowledge of you for all those that are watching. Father, I speak to the bodies of those that are watching and I just command simply, Father, that they be healed in the name of Jesus. No, I thank you that there is no time, there is no distance with you. Whatever it is that is, that is ailing them, Father, if it is a right knee, if it is a left ankle, if it is a kidney, Father, if it is a heart, Father, we speak to those things and we command them to be healed Amen. in the name Amen. of Jesus. And if that's you guys, if that's something that you have, you take that word for yourself. It doesn't matter if you're here, if you're online, where you are, that is for you. You take it and you receive it, and then you get in the word, and you get grounded, so you keep it. Amen. Amen. Well, that's awesome. I'm so glad God healed you. Me too.
<laughs> Aren't you excited about the maturity that you've seen in Nikki and in Teresa here? And they didn't just get healed in their body. They've been healed in their heart, in their mind. That's awesome. So thank you. God bless you. Let's praise God for what he did for Teresa. Amen. Thanks, Andrew. Thank you.